Hey what's up guys Steven here and welcome to my review of the Elephone M2. So finally I've got the black version because I wasn't so satisfied with the golden one. I've got it from everbuying.net, you'll find a link down below in the description. But let's get directly started and let's have a look at the specs of this little baby. Alright so the Elephone M2 retails for $180, comes with the MTK6753 processor, it's clocked at 1.3GHz and it's an octa-core. 3GB of RAM which is really quite good for the chipset. 32GB of internal memory, which is also okay, and 5MP front facing shooter and a 13MP rear camera. It should have the IMX214, so it was a popular sensor also used in the OnePlus One, which had decent camera quality. And 2600mAh battery, which lasts around 6 hours, so yeah, quite okay. Um, Android 5.1. Full HD resolution display, 401 pixel per inch, and it's a little bit of a yellowish display. Okay, so that are basically the specs, and now let's see what we can find inside the box. But now let me quickly show you what you can find inside the package. Now first of all, it comes with four screen protectors. So well, um, not only for the front side, so two for the back side, two for the front side, which is really cool, because the back side is made out of metal and aluminum, and you know, you can get the scratches too, so a screen protector on the back side could be quite useful. Okay, then it comes with a quick starter guide, which you can see right over here, here with the Elephone logo. And also if you check this out, um, it's colored and yeah, it basically explains you how to use Android. But um, it's completely here in English and no other language. So this is a really big user man manual, but only one language. Then here we have the charger. So here you can see it with the Elephone logo. Comes with the correct power socket connector for my country. That's pretty good. And you can see there is no quick charging on the Elephone M2. So on the phone for um, about $180 quick charging could be included. We can see here output 5 volts, 1 amp. And I tried it with my USB meter. So actually um, the Elephone M2 is capped at exactly 970 milliamps. So if you buy a fast charger it won't help because yeah, the charging circuit is capped to 970 milliamps. Okay, um, then also micro USB cable is included, but absolutely nothing special, so just a normal micro USB cable here in white. And that's everything you can find inside of the basic package. Then now let's go and let's have a closer look at the smartphone. Right, right guys, here's the Elephone M2 and the first feeling in my hands was like, oh my god, this device is really big and hard to operate with one hand if you just check this out. I have really big hands, but yeah, you see, I'm kinda hard to operate. 5.5 inch um, full HD resolution display and the phone is almost completely made out of metal. So yeah, um, regarding the weight, I was like, um, this phone is almost a little bit too lightweight for the size. It only weighs 163 grams and it's a really big and huge phone. So I was like, hmm, it feels a bit too lightweight. So I'm not really sure about the battery capacity and how it looks from the inside. But I have to say from the outside, it, it feels really good. It has a 2.5D arc screen. So it's a little bit curved on the other edges of the screen. And I'm not really sure about the protection, but it seems to be quite scratch resistant. But there's a screen protector included, so please use it. That then um, we can have a look at the back side. So it's made out of aluminum. That's the black version, finally, because the gold version, I didn't like it so much. You can see here the Elephone logo. Um, here C certification, Elephone Mobile and M2. And at the bottom side here and at the top side we have those black bars. They're actually made out of plastic, so not aluminum. And it feels a little bit like glass, but yeah, I guess this is some plastic glass because you can also scratch it more easily than the front side. And yeah, this is to um, have a better signal quality because at the bottom and at the top we have the antennas. And if they are covered by um, aluminum, it will be shielded and the signal won't be so good. Okay, now also here at the top we have um, the LED flash. It looks like a dual one, but it's actually just a single one. And here we have the rear camera, which should have 13 megapixel. Okay, so let's have a look here at the frame. And if you check this out, this phone is really thin. You'll find the exact dimensions down below in the description. And on the left side of the frame, we have here the buttons. The power button is made out of metal and it's sliding a little bit up and down, but just a little bit. The volume rocker, so it's a single button up and down, um, Yeah, feels a bit better, so it's a bit stiffer here on my device. We can have a look at the bottom side. Here we have the micro USB port and the, um, a microphone, so that little hole. And here we have something which looks like a dual speaker design, but it's actually just a single one. And at the top here we have another hole, this is the top microphone and a 3.5mm headphone jack. Okay, on the right side here we have the SIM card tray, so we'll later just remove it after we're done with the walk around. And in there you'll find a dual SIM slot, but you can also just input micro SD cards. The front side here, so let's talk about this. Now the display is 5.5 inches as I've told you, full HD resolution. 
Um, has some really nice pixel density, so it's kind of sharp, and the colors are looking good. Viewing angles, not the best I've seen, but you see, it doesn't change the color a lot, so it looks actually quite okay. Now at the bottom of this device we have capacitive touch buttons. Unfortunately there is no backlight. So we just have those silver painted capacitive touch buttons, menu and back button. And yeah, no backlight on them. But yeah, they're working good. In the middle we have the home button. It's a mechanical home button. And it's also a fingerprint scanner. So um, the cool thing is um, this device supports um, to unlock it here from the sleep state. So if I would just put my finger on the scanner, boom, it's unlocked. Okay, please try again. It um, didn't recognize my finger, but we'll do later and test anyway. So that's something which is very good. Then um, the bezels of this device are not too thick. So there is no massive black bar around the display just like on the Elephone P8000 which I really appreciate. And at the top of this device here we have the notification LED. Unfortunately it only lights up in red so I've tested it with the LED light manager and yeah only red available. Here we have the 5 megapixel front facing camera, in the middle we have the speaker, so the earpiece and here on the right side we have light and proximity sensor. So all in all, the whole phone, the materials used, feels absolutely good. I really like the 2.5D arc screen combined here with the metal frame, which looks, by the way, also nice. It looks a little bit like an iPhone space gray color. Okay, that's everything here from the outside. And now I would say, um, let's quickly remove the SIM card tray so I can show you what you can insert in that little baby. Now here's a closer look at the SIM card tray. And as you can see, we have here two SIM card slots. So on the left side, we have the first SIM card slot, which is a micro SIM card slot. And on the right side, we have a combination slot. So here you can put in a micro SD card or a micro SIM card. So you can't put in both. So you really have to decide between the dual SIM feature or memory extension. So if you want to put in two SIM cards and then you will lose a micro SD card or one SIM card and one micro SD card but then you will lose the dual SIM feature. Okay that's basically here um, yeah, the SIM card tray and this comes into the only 7.35 millimeter thick body of the Elephone M2. Okay guys so straightforward we're here in Android 5.1 and let's also talk about the routability so you can root the smartphone you can install custom ROMs, but um, there are just two or three custom ROMs available right now, and yeah, they're more buggy than the stock OS here, so I wouldn't actually switch. Okay, um, you can see here um, Android 5.1, and I have to say, it looks very basic, so it comes in with the basic launcher, so everything on stock, which I really prefer. For sure, you can customize it a little bit if you want to, but I would say let's um, go straight forward here to the settings, and let's have a closer look here at about the phone. Here you can see wireless update. I did a note, so it was like a week ago um, when I actually received the phone, but currently we're here up to date. Now, Elephone has an Elephone forum and a pretty gr good growing community, so there are some custom ROMs, but they tend to be ports and kind of buggy. You can see here Android 5.1, so here we have the Lollipop, definitely the latest version here right now. Regarding Marshmallow and other updates, I can't really tell you, and I'm also not so, um, yeah, so sure if you will get an update to Android 6, even though the chipset and all that would support it. Okay, at the top here we have Wi-Fi, so I can quickly show you here the Wi-Fi connection. And there we go. And actually I have to say, um, regarding Wi-Fi, it's mid-range. Now it's not some super high end antenna, but um, it's okay. So you can see here my network. I can easily connect here, for instance, to my home network. Also, for instance, here hot hotspot of the OnePlus 2. So Wi-Fi is okay, but the range is um, like... 30% um, lower than on my S6, which had actually pretty good Wi-Fi. Okay, we can have a look at Bluetooth, and um, Bluetooth is also working, and there's also Hotnot inside. There is no NFC on the Elephone M2, but there is Hotnot, which allows data exchange when the screen touches another device. This is basically MTK's own NFC, and it only works between MTK devices, which kind of sucks, so you can't use NFC Pay or something like that with the smartphone. Here are the display settings. You see mirror vision is inside and we also have your sensor calibration. For instance, uh, proximity sensor calibration, if there's something wrong because your display always is always blacker in calls or whatever, you can recalibrate the sensor here and also the G sensor can be recalibrated in here. Regarding the storage, I told you it comes with 32 gigs. Available so the total space is actually just 25 gigs and around 24 usable straight out of the box. Okay, um, you can put in SD cards, but as I've told you, 
you will lose your dual sim feature. So let's head straight forward to the battery life and the battery life is not so impressive. Now it's around 6 hours um, in Geekbench 3, 6 hours also in, in PC Mac and yeah this is not so impressive. So the on screen time is kind of poor and you probably have to recharge twice a day. For me it was like when I when I went to work it was full then um, yeah in the evening I was like hey I'm going to charge it because otherwise I won't make it until home or if I go out at night then also there is no choose anymore. And yeah I have to say um, for hardcore users um, this is really um, the worst thing about the smartphone and this is the battery life. This was not impressive as I've told you right now around 6 hours in Geekbench 3 really with minimum display. Okay, we can have a look here at apps running in the background, so let's check this out, the memory consumption. Now it comes with 3 gigs of RAM, which is really, really a lot. So here you also see it's 700 megabytes used by the system, 390 of apps running in the background, so it's just basic stuff. And we still have 1.8 gigabytes of free memory, um, which we can use for apps or games. That's really quite a lot, more than some other phones even have. Okay, and let's have a look here at security, and here we have the fingerprint scanner. So we have here for instance open fingerprints unlock so you can unlock your screen and here you can register your fingerprints. I've actually registered my thumb here three times and it's a 360 degree scanner so you can do it in every direction once registered and it works really really good. So yeah that's basically everything here. Um, I will quickly show you how the fingerprint scanner works so there we go. Now here's the fingerprint scanner. Now it's not the fastest one I've seen but it works quite accurate. I will now put my thumb beyond the scanner but I won't press the button and you see unlocked. It takes quite a while to unlock so it's not really the fastest one but it works really good and really accurate. Here once again without pressing the button so directly here from the black screen and you don't even have to press the button for sure you can do it if you want to so now um, please try again because this finger was not registered. Now if we lock the screen here again and there we go Okay, um, once um, the fingerprint scanner failed, you probably have to press, but you see it's quite accurate and also works, yeah, not, not so fast, but fast enough. So back to the settings. We just had a look at the security stuff, and here we have language and input. So the ROM is also multi-language. It's not the full Android language pack, but you can see most of the languages here supported. English, German, and yeah, also all those other languages you can see here, also a couple of different types of Chinese. So that's pretty good, everything in here you need, and that's also everything we can check out here. So no fancy options, no multicolor LED, no NFC, but yeah, all the basic stuff. Okay, then let's have a look at the UI. As you can see, um, the UI is very basic, basic launcher, and yeah, just like you would expect from an elephone because most of them come with the basic stuff. Um, here you can see your notifications, and here we have quick toggles. So we also have a hot knot button, we have the flashlight, location based services, so GPS, um, yeah, here also the other crap like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, nothing special. Then now let's try to do a quick call, so I can show you that all the sensors are working and you can hear the speaker quality. Um, yeah, it doesn't cut off the display sometimes because you have to be really near. So this is why you have the proximity sensor calibration and I actually prefer when it cuts off like two centimeters here. Okay, we can now try um, the speaker. And yeah, the speaker is really, really loud, but uh, sounds a bit tinny, so just listen here for yourself. And yeah, it's not really the best quality, but at least it's very loud. So if you do calls, everybody will hear it. All right, that's regarding call quality, and also had no problems when I was in town, like that the connection disconnects or anything else. Um, yeah, it's a five-point capacitive touchscreen and also works quite accurate. Actually, I'm not using SMS, but I can quickly show you how to type. Hello, guys. So, yeah, there are absolutely no ghost touches. So, I have some other devices, Blackview, some cheap-ass China phones. And there I really have sometimes problems that I type and it types two letters or something different. Okay, um, that's regarding um, yeah, the usability here. We can have a quick look here at the menu. So you see also um, very basic and I quickly want to show you the applications we can find here. So it comes for sure with browser, calculator, calendar and here the camera application. So um, we'll now just, you will now just see some sample videos from the rear camera and then I will show you the camera application and we'll also talk a bit about the image quality. Now here's a quick front facing camera test on the Elephone M2 and we're here outside of Vienna, very beautiful day today, also here with the sunlight. So you see the camera also deals well with the lighting and yeah, just check out the quality here right now for yourself. I hope I don't cover the microphone. Also have a look at the microphone quality. And yeah, it's not among the best front-facing cameras I've seen, so it could have more details, but it's really nice wide-angle. I can get myself easily on the picture. 
I just hold it right now 30 centimeters away from my face. So a full arm length is like almost my full body. So that looks pretty okay. But it really comes down to personal preference. Just check it out right now. Also objects in the background. So there are some cars in the background, trees. You can also see that it's not too blurry in the background. So yeah, for me it looks quite okay here on the Elephone. All right, so recording dimensions of the rear camera, full HD, 30 FPS. Now, yeah, video quality is slightly better than on the Elephone P8000, but yeah, still not really too good. But it's something I would classify as an okay video quality. Now, just check it out right now for yourself. So here um, we have some houses in the background. Here also maybe some close-ups. Here my watch, so let's try to focus here. And oh yeah, okay, close-ups seem to look good. Um, the focus is sometimes a little bit slow and the exposure not 100% right, but it looks okay. So we can go here a little bit for the image stabilization. Also, um, just check out the microphone quality right now because it comes with real microphones. Oh, don't tell me the damn time. Always the same crap. Um, you see lighting adjustment actually works. You can hear, see here the sunlight. So the lighting adjustment is pretty good here so far as I can see. But as always, um, video quality comes down to personal preference. So just check it out right now on the computer. And this is the rear camera quality of the Elephone M2. So you did now see some sample videos and yeah, it looks quite okay. So for the price, actually some very good video quality. Full HD resolution is maximum at 30 FPS, but yeah, there's also slow motion. So um, 720p, 120 FPS, just check it out right over here. And I have to say, quality really okay. Now regarding the full HD quality, so there's not so much detail um, in the distance and also has sometimes focusing issues, but still looks very good for the price. Now, yeah, the rear camera, so the photo quality, good dynamic range, but sometimes it's a little bit overexposed. Then HDR is a bit slow and the 13 megapixel camera really shoots with 13 megapixels, that's great, and also with a 2.0 aperture. If you want to see sample pictures, they on China devices. Now the front facing camera, so we can also switch here to the front facing camera, it shoots with a 2.2 aperture, it's wide angle, looks nice, in low light it gets really crispy, it's something I would say it's an okay camera, but could look really a little bit sharper. Okay, then let's have a quick look here at the camera application. Here on the left side we have slow motion, you can see it here. Then you can't change the resolution anymore. We have here an HDR button and here at the bottom you can actually choose if you want to take a picture or if you want to do um, yeah, a video. Okay, so let's deactivate HDR. We have here the LED flash which we'll check out a bit later and we can switch it to the front facing camera. Let's stay here. We have face beauty mode as always, different effects at the top. Here um, the camera settings, also it supports anti-shake and all that and um, we can check out here the picture size it's maximum 5 megapixel in 4 to 3 and if we switch to full screen then it's also still 5 megapixels which is quite good here in video mode well um, you can see here video quality is set here to high and you've seen the sample video so it looked quite okay but could look a little bit better all right um, here the rear camera um, at the top as always effects HDR is always in there um, we also have here anti-shake for instance zero shutter delay which is currently on electronic image step image stabilization and the video quality here is now set to fine. Okay, so here you can see the shutter and yeah, sorry, um, sometimes that button here is not really responsive and then tries to focus here. And here you can see, oh my god, and here you can see, oh my god, what's up? So sometimes I just miss here the shutter button, not really sure why. Now the shutter could be a little bit faster, but yeah, it's still okay. And um, if you take an HDR picture, it takes like two to three seconds, so it's a little bit slow. Okay, um, here at the top, different effects, and that's the camera. So camera quality, um, really quite okay. We can still continue here in the menu. So it comes with um, clock contacts, all the usual stuff. It comes with an FM radio, but well, there was no headset included. It comes with all the Google apps pre-installed. You don't need to worry about that. And it also comes with the latest version of the Google Play Store. Um, what I had to do is just update the Google application. So first of all, it came with an outdated version, but well, it's absolutely no problem to do it. Okay, so let's um, go back here to the menu. Um, it also comes here with smart gestures, so a wake up. There is double tap to wake up inside. It supports off-screen gestures, so you really don't need to worry about that. And yeah, that are basically all the important applications in 
machine here and now I would say let's do a quick LED flash test, sound and movie test, GPS test, some benchmarks and after all this you will hear my final conclusion about it. Now guys here's a quick GPS signal test on the GPS test application and well we have beautiful weather conditions today. It's totally sunny, um, there are no clouds, blue sky so we don't even think that it's winter here. But well we have 21 satellites in view, we have 14 in use, that's pretty good. But if you have a look at the signal to the satellites then it does not look so good. We have two free green bars which is yeah pretty good signal but you also have a lot of yellow bars with low signal um, almost to the red bars which starts at 20 which means kind of bad signal. So the signal quality itself does not look so good. I've seen devices performing way better with the chipset. Then let's have a look at the Android's GPS test application so we can confirm Russian satellites are working, GLONASS support, 13 American ones, 9 Russian ones and here you can see for instance the signal level to them. So we're connected to 16 out of 22 with an accuracy of 2 meters while we are standing. Let's start to drive. Accuracy doesn't really go up, 3 meters, 4 meters. So um, yeah, keeps a, a good ratio. Sometimes there are some lag spikes up to 2 kilometers or whatever but you see also the signal here doesn't look so good. So it loses the satellites, regains and quite low signal. But let's do a quick navigation test to see how this here performs in reality. All right, all right. So here's a quick navigation test of Google navigation. So we're driving now here to the right road and let's just see what GPS is doing right now because it doesn't seem to be that accurate. And it still thinks we are on the left road, so on the main road, but we're actually here on the right road. And yeah, let's drive here a little bit faster. So it still thinks we're on the main road. So the accuracy of the GPS is not accurate. Let's drive a little bit faster and we'll go here to the right. So let's see um, what the range is when it detects the change that we're actually not on this road. Okay, there we go. Up to the right, guys. And it's 10 meters, 15 meters. Yeah, okay, all right. So after 15 meters, it has detected that we're on a different road. Then now let's just go and let's accelerate here a little bit to see if it lags behind. Okay. And okay, um, regarding the speed, it's quite accurate. But um, regarding to differentiate between um, roads which are very close together, then it's not so accurate. So the GPS performance, also what I've seen in the last days, is not the best I've seen, but it's working for navigation. But if you're in town with many roads close together, probably you will have a problem. Alright guys, so this is the GPS performance on the Elephone M. Now the speaker of this device is not among the best I've heard, but yeah, it's quite okay. So if you crank up the volume, if you do the volume boost, it gets really crispy and it sounds a bit flat. So you would have to tweak it with an equalizer, but you can't tweak it to sound really good. So yeah, the device is very thin. It's 7.3 millimeters, so the speaker in there is not really the best and has also not much room. But we can just do here movie test and sound test. So movie playback on YouTube, absolutely absolutely smooth, not a single lag and yeah the sound quality is not really the best. So this is right now here maximum volume on YouTube and there we go. So just listen here for yourself and let's skip a bit forward and yeah not really the best quality and also sounds kind of flat but what you expect from a smartphone which is that slim and also that cheap. Well guys, the benchmarks are finished and here are the results. 38.8k in the Antutu benchmark, which is quite okay for the chipset. If you have a look here at the info, then you can see um, it supports 64 bits, so we have a 64 bit kernel and full HD resolution display, 13.3 megapixel camera, MTK6753, 64 bits, octa core, clocks of clock up to 1.3 gigahertz. GPU is the Mali T720, so if interested, you can check out some benchmarks online. Now let's have a look at Geekbench 3. As you can see, it has a quite high multi-core score, 2887, single core around 620. Now combined with 3GB of RAM, the MTK6753 is actually quite decent. Here you can see 2.85GB. We can also have a look here at CPU-C, here the system on chip. This reading is actually wrong, it should actually show the 6753. And you can see a couple of cores active, maximum clock 1.3 GHz. Well, nothing special in here, just full HD resolution display, something which is really interesting. So the model number, it's here the Sony Xperia M2. On the computer, it's recognized as the P6000. So yeah, some mess here with um, yeah the model number, but well, who cares? Um, we can see here the system, Android 5.1, full 64-bit support. Um, here we have the battery, so it shows here in CPU-C 2300, well, not really sure. Actually, 
yeah, um, I think it's also a bit less because of the size and also the weight. Um, we can have a look here at the temperature, 26 degrees. Also, if we check out here, the temperature, even after the benchmarks, keeps pretty cool with a maximum of 35 to 38 degrees. So, absolutely no overheating, also during charging. Sensors seem to work, but there are not too many included. So, if you have a look at the orientation and magnetic sensor, then they are not working at all. Next thing is the multi-touch tester. So, we have here a 5-point capacitive touchscreen, absolutely absolutely no ghost touches, so that's pretty good. Regarding the speed test, now it works in my country, so 4G is absolutely no problem. I have a 100 Mbit 4G contract, getting here 53 Mbits down, so well, maximum here in the speed test application. And also quite good upload and a really nice ping. So regarding the speed of LT, I had absolutely no issues. Okay, um, that's regarding the speed test. Then let's have a quick look at the frequencies. So um, here we have SIM card slot 1 and we have a quad band on GSM. We have triple band on WCDMA and on LT we have 1, 3, 7, 8 and 20. So LT band 20 is also in there. LT works also really fine in my country. And we can also have a look here at SIM 2 and as you can see quad band on GSM. Now last but not least a quick look at sensor box and you can see it just comes with the basic sensors, there's no gyroscope and there is a magnetic sensor but if you just check this out, zero micro tesla all the time so the sensor is also fake. We just have a sound sensor microphone working, proximity sensor is working as you can see but um, you should probably calibrate it because you see the range is kind of small, light sensor, orientation sensor and the accelerometer. So that's basically everything regarding benchmarks and now let's do a quick gaming test. Now the MTK6753 is an octa-core processor, but that does not mean that it's really a high-end chipset. So I would say, yeah, it's low mid-range, but um, you can see um, here in the high-intense 3D games like Nova, it really struggles because it's also combined with a full HD resolution display. So yeah, it's playable, but you have a low frame rate, you have some FPS drops during explosions and all that, and it will run the majority of games actually pretty good. But if you're a real hardcore gamer and you want a really smooth experience, Appearance also in the top games then you should get a different chipset than this one here. Okay but yeah um, for the majority of people as I've said casual gamers it won't be a problem at all since it also runs as far as 8 pretty good sometimes FPS drops but yeah it's quite playable. Now there's something I noticed about OTG so it's very picky about the USB OTG cable so OTG is working but well, it does not work with all my USB OTG cables, so really kind of strange. But well, I can definitely confirm OTG is working on the Elephone M2, but probably you have to try out a couple of cables because, for instance, this cable and the other cable works on all my other phones, also with that USB drive, which is correctly formatted. But here on the Elephone M2, it just refuses to load. The only issue I have actually with the USB port. Alright everybody, we're now here at the end of this review and here comes my final conclusion. Let's get started with the pros. The body quality is really nice even though it's a bit lightweight. Now it's very cheap, it has decent performance for the price, also quite good camera, so the Sony sensor is doing a good job, optimization is good and finally slow motion support. The fingerprint scan is also kinda nice, big storage and good 4G speeds. So 4G speeds and also the whole connectivity of the phone was good. Now regarding the cons, it has dual sim but you can't put in a micro SD card if you use the dual sim feature. Non impressive battery life, so 6 hours in the benchmarks, and also, yeah, the whole real life usage was not so good, so I had to recharge at the end of the day to really make it through the day. The fingerprint scan on the home button feels kinda awkward because it doesn't feel so good if I put my finger on there and sometimes then also refuses to work. So yeah, um, if it would be flat and even with the glass, it would be better in my opinion. Now um, also slow charging, so the charging speed is capped with 970 milliamps, so this is not a lot. Now the battery life is also not too good, so at least quick charging would be nice in the M2. I had this USB OTG issue, not really sure why. The Wi-Fi is okay but could be a little bit better and the notification LED only lights up in red so far what I've seen in the test application. Alright, so that's regarding the pros and cons. I still think the Elephone M2 is not a bad phone at all. If you like the design, you can go for it. But I can't really tell you about future updates, you know, um, it's Elephone. So they're pushing out phones quite a lot, not really so sure about the updates. The custom ROMs you usually get are kind of crappy and badly optimized so you should stick with the stock ROM but yeah let's see what the future brings I can't tell you right now but so far it's a solid phone not too bad at all for the price thanks for watching this review you will find a written review on chinadevices.com see you soon in the next one have a nice day and bye bye